back together and we're down through a tough stretch, but uh, uh, we're uh, completed all the applications for some money uh, from FEMA and um, our insurance. So things are moving little by little. Good. Um, Ojai Water Conservation oh. District is not here. City of Ojai, Johnny. Well, while we have no wells or <laughs> water to report, I would like to uh, announce that the city councils, uh, I'll be calling a special meeting on the 7th of August uh, to deal with water issues and to uh, recommend going forward with the uh, water consultation that uh, Regina uh, from Sierra is here this evening, or the seem to talk with your group or our group about, but uh, yeah, we're, we're very pleased with the progress so far. Thank you. Um, for Casitas, um, I, I'll report that uh, at yesterday's meeting, the uh, Casitas voted unanimously to move forward with a comprehensive water resource plan. Um, uh, a request for proposal probably was sent out either yesterday or today. And we also um, signed a contract with Spinatar, who put in the the screens and cameras at the um, boardroom and they're going to prepare the hardware so that um, a host can um, store and broadcast all of the meetings from um, that day forward. So things are moving along. The, uh, the lake is at 33.3%. Uh, the lake elevation is 486.74 um, feet above mean sea level. That means we have 79,058 acre feet left in the in the uh, reservoir. And did Mike send you the other information? Okay. Okay. Um, going to move on to item four, which is the basin status report. And um, we have a presentation by Mr. Jordan Keir of Keir Groundwater. Thank you, Russ. Uh, today, what I wanted to use this opportunity to share is, of course, some basin status issues, but also uh, highlight some of the things from the 2018 groundwater management plan update because they do relate specifically uh, to input and output and changes in storage. Let's see. So we'll talk a little bit about basin conditions and then some of the groundwater management plan action items that really haven't been presented uh, in this light but are in the, uh, the final version of the groundwater management plan. And really specifically that speaks to the perched aquifer importance uh, that underlies the western and southern portion of the basin and largely under the city limits. So shown here is the classic uh, OBGMA boundary in, in red and then the most recent uh, DWR approved groundwater basin boundary in the darker blue. And of course there are our uh, half a dozen monitoring well points that we have data loggers within. Uh, collecting water levels every 90 minutes or so. Uh, and the northernmost of which is the, is the depth discrete monitoring well in the northern portion of the basin, uh, really keeping our finger on the pulse of the recharge to the system. On the discharge side where that triangle just appeared uh, is, is where we're monitoring on a monthly basis the elevation and latitude and longitude of daylight and groundwater beneath uh, San Antonio Creek uh, largely within city limits, uh, largely coming from the perched aquifer system. We'll talk a bit more about that. On the hydrograph side of things, we had our nice wet 2017 year with a nice slow groundwater recession, owing large part to a lot of conservation, I think, in the, in the valley, uh, and then a relatively muted uh, fall to winter season, owing largely to Thomas Fire and associated uh, plugging of and siltation of creek channels. 
So it's been relatively uh, a relative plateau uh, since that time. This is data from the Keywell, uh, effectively uh, for the past year and a half. The blue lines representing a, a relative elevation to feet above the logger in that Elrod well at Carn and Grand. Hydrographically, it looks like this. Uh, we reached our peak, muted, albeit uh, on May 7th, 2018, with a depth of water of 182 feet, uh, only a rise of about eight feet uh, owing to the relatively limited rains uh, we had here this year. Uh, it's declined a little bit since then. As you saw in that last graphic, it's relatively plateaued and has a somewhat horizontal uh, hydrographic signature. Now, I like this photograph because it's of that uh, October 26, 2017 uh, flow out of the groundwater basin just outside of the groundwater basin, but still within OBGMA jurisdiction. And you can see the, uh, the dipping strata there on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the photograph, water flowing in San Antonio Creek in the center and right. And that dipping strata is a bedrock formation. It's a Vaqueros sandstone and, and some shale material that's there. Uh, but that's where you have effectively no alluvium in the San Antonio Creek Channel, just outside of this basin. So what you see is all the basin is giving that creek at that time. And during drought years or during periods of, uh, of deficient rainfall, uh, there's a significant component of this water sourced from what we call the perched aquifer system. What is the perched aquifer system? If we take a cross section through the city of Ojai, and there's San Antonio Creek trickling down, is the geologic map this time. Uh, so all the whitish, grayish material is alluvium of the basins and, and San Antonio Creek. That dashed line represents the, uh, the ephemeral and portions of, the, of San Antonio Creek that we monitor once surface flow ceases completely across the basin. What that, what that has told us, because the elevation of that is what's fading into play now, it's the, effectively what appears to be the north and eastern limits of the perching aquifer system, uh, largely owing to the clay deposition uh, more distal from the source alluvial fans on the opposite side of the basin, where, so grains of, of uh, deposition are much finer, and there's a lot more clay and potentially lacustrine uh, or lake-type deposits that formed the, the clay that focuses as a confining layer for deeper zones and a perching layer for shallow zones. Kind of hard to describe that way, but if I put it in a picture by putting a slice through the basin there and then give you a cross-section of what this looks like, looking west through the basin. This is a simplified cross-section, uh, so you're effectively looking at the entire, uh, the entire north to south uh, extent of the basin through right about where we're sitting. And if we take a look at where the bedrock is, that's you know, down some 700 feet, uh, six to 700 feet below ground surface, uh, in the deepest portion just to the north and east of us. And in the very area where we're sitting, and in fact, these clay strata shown in the darker brown compared to the sands and gravels that are in the lighter brown and stippled uh, are actually actual correlatable clay strata that we've seen from a, a well that was drilled since many of our original correlations, since the DBSNA groundwater model was, was prepared uh, right next to the OBGMA offices, so pretty close to, to where we are. That well is this. Now, there's a whole host of action items that would come from, uh, come out of the groundwater man management plan in partnership with the city of Ojai and, and other entities that may be funding vehicles and or participating uh, entities, some private, some public, that could help better understand the importance and nature and extent of this perching layer. Why is it so important? Because that is the most controllable discharge mechanism to habitat to San Antonio Creek and downstream beneficial uses. So I've put this, this e-log of the, of the well at actually the Hanson Yard. And for, if you can see, if you can see this, maybe I'll stand up right here. Explain this a little bit. For those of you who are familiar with e-logs, 
uh, they let us, uh, it's, it's done in a downhole environment uh, that is typically fluid filled on a wire line logger. And imagine this torpedo on a, on a, on a wire line. It's been done since uh, 1928 in Peschelbronn, France, uh, invented by the Schlumberger brothers. Uh, same outfit that you now recognize their name in the in the oil business, right? And they still do the same kind of thing. But the e-log, and we've explained this before, but I think it's it's worth rehashing because this is so important. Because it's the link that we have for drawing this cross section. Within this e-log, you have a resistivity curve and a self potential curve, the and a gamma ray curve. So there's really there's really three different curves that we're looking at vertically here. This is done in a wireline borehole and it's about a 450 foot deep well at the Hansen Yard. They use it uh, for, for mixing drilling mud and such and taking it off to different drilling outfits, uh, drilling sites uh, within their area of business. What's important about this is that the resistivity curves are where gravels and sands are, they're highest. They're picked furthest to the right. Clays kick further to the left. Likewise, the uh, self potential curve is fairly, it's the closest thing to porosity that we and it shows where it kicks to the left a, a higher porosity sands and gravels, and similar to the gamma ray curve, which measures the natural radioactivity of the, of the soils and, and water they're in, clays being emitting more natural radioactivity than, uh, than sands and gravels. But the simplest way to look at it is this. We have so much, so, such high resistivity in this uppermost zone that it actually wraps around the curve of this e-log scale, then kicks way over to the left for this clay stratum. Then we have a sand unit in the middle and another clay stratum. Based on the SP curve, there's another fine-grained sand unit here and then a thick clay that goes all the way down to really what is the most productive aquifer within the basin. Are you following along here? Yeah. Okay, I love hearing that. Um, the, the idea being that it's this zone that in this case, it's 300 to four, 350 to 450 feet, is the most productive water-bearing unit for extraction for the municipal supplies, for agricultural supplies, and some domestic supplies uh, in, the, in the valley. The beauty of that is that we can take those objective data points throughout the basin and correlate them left to right, north to south, east to west, and more importantly, up and down, to see where these clay strata are laterally contiguous. So that's one step that we should continue as part of this perching layer investigation. Number two, B, uh, continue to monitor the creek discharge flow in San Antonio Creek. And that's something that we're doing on a, on a very frequent basis uh, on the latitude, longitude, daylighting, and infiltration of groundwater program the OBGMA has, uh, where we monthly map the location of daylighting groundwater and where it infiltrates on the opposite side, uh, outside of the basin to the south uh, when time permits. Number C, depth discrete monitoring wells. Now, here's this one coming down in, into fully penetrating the, the alluvial aquifer and aquitard uh, portions of the basin. And it's very similar to the depth discrete monitoring well at the northern end, the recharge portion of the basin. But in this case, the idea is to get a better handle on what is the nature and extent of that perching, perched aquifer system? What is the nature and extent of the interstitial and intermediate aquifers in the middle zone, and how does the water levels in the, uh, in the deepest portion of the basin correlate to what's going on above it, both from the discharge side, from the perching layer, and deeper. Now, there are wells all over the, all over the basin, and there are several within, uh, within just the perching layer, and many of those are, are environmental investigation wells uh, associated with gas stations. We were looking at some of the data in preparation of the groundwater management plan and noted that you know, the depth to water within the city limits, very shallow, very shallow, 10 feet, three feet, four feet, six feet. In some places, you need a French drain in the foundation of your, of your building in town. Uh, the idea being that it's so shallow and it is clearly connected to San Antonio Creek and it seems to be something that is, is just sitting there and or able to be managed in a way that can have a greater effect on discharge to San Antonio Creek than the deeper portions of the basin, which as we see based on these e-logs and the hydrographic data, appears to be significantly disconnected from the deeper production zones. Clear? Yes. I only heard one yeah. Yeah. Almost. All right, Almost. thank you. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Clear as mud, right? Clear as drilling mud. Um, 
So number D is, what do we do? How do we manage that? What kind of projects can be conducted to, uh, to really optimize the, uh, the perched aquifer use? And it may be recharge projects in town. That's, been, that's part of our groundwater management plan. Because if we can capture stormwater within the city in places where, based on the studies that we're talking about through A, B, and C, best optimize the location for recharge to that perch system, which then infiltrates into the subsurface and importantly exfiltrates in a habitat supporting and beneficial use environment along San Antonio Creek. And of course, E, getting a better handle on the de detailed identification of the perch aquifer. So I wanted to share that with you guys as sort of the, the latest and greatest highlights that you haven't seen before uh, within this groundwater management plan that we'll talk about a little bit later. And that's the significant portion of the output of the basin. Okay, can I ask a question? Of course. Um, it looks like the top aquifer is completely confined. Is it? Completely unconfined. Unconfined. Well, based on that e-log, but that e-log only, uh, it, it starts at about 30 feet. So there could be some. But some you see an aquitard all the way across there, right? Correct. So this, and that's why we have, I mean, everybody, when I first started looking at the basin here, one of the things that jumped out to me was in Patricia Fry's book, uh, History of Ojai, she quotes, there were 118 flowing artesian wells in Ojai in the 1890s. And there were probably 119 flowing artesian wells in Ojai in 2011. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we don't really report on that portion. We report on the, the deep dry periods in between. And, and that's when you really have to manage things this way. But the confining, the, con the confining layers are these clay strata such that when the water levels are shallower or the potential metric surface is shallower than the uh, aquifers which, uh, which bear the water, you have that confining, these are confining layers. When the water levels are deeper in the basin and shallower in the perching layer, they act as perching layers. So they okay. connect both ways, perching going down and confining against pressures coming upwards. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Is that it? End of slideshow. End of slideshow. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. That was pretty good. We've got okay. a lot more, and it's only 58 pages. <laughs> right. And it's easy to read. Um, uh, item five is the general manager's report. John, I think you're up. Yes, I just have a couple couple things I wanted to report on. Um, CC and I are actively talking, discussing things more so we can start getting a little more organized on certain things. Uh, one of those areas uh, that I've noted in the work plan that we'll talk about later is looking at records retention. I think that's a big deal and sh she wants to get better organized and I think between that and getting those records organized and, and a retention schedule which we'll bring to the board for discussion at some point. I think that's that's an important thing for the agency. Um, we, today we've been talking about a board calendar, so we'd like to put that together with holidays and all the meetings and things that um, to give the board an idea of when things are gonna transpire. And if you're gonna be absent, it would be helpful to know that in early in advance also, so that we hopefully make sure we have a quorum at each of the meetings and on occasion. It that, helps. It's been it a really challenge, does. yeah. yeah. Um, Tonight I'll talk more about details on the work plan. Uh, and then uh, one of the items on your agenda tonight is the MOU uh, with the Watershed Coalition. And there's a couple of different funding requests that come through. And so CC and I have talked about today. I wanna go back and look at all that information and find out some of the genesis of those funding amounts, uh, why OBGMA pays what it does and what it supports and making sure that we're, we're paying what we need to pay and, and not more. But um, certainly we don't wanna uh, back away from those support of the different watershed activities, but I think it's important to uh, make sure that OBGMA is providing its, its fair share of funding. So with that, we'll talk about the work plan when we get there. Okay, okay. good. All right, item six is public comments on items not appearing on the agenda. And Bill, you put in the first card, you're up. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Bill Miley, and I lived here. I have lived here since 1968. My subject is who your board should appoint to represent the new 
Community Service District, in my opinion. Each of you have constituents you represent, some involving large numbers and some involving small numbers. Example, no, that's actually on the agenda. What? That's actually on the agenda. Oh, I haven't seen the agenda. Yeah, we're, we're going to be discussing it in uh, item 8C. Eight eight? C. 8C. C. Oh, yeah. So okay. if you want to hold your comments and, and comment then, I'll, I'll bring you back up, okay? Otherwise, can I finish what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. So, um, since Flo was the originator of the idea for let's move Golden State on out of the valley, with its effort of its volunteer board, all its research for creating a community service district, looking at community outreach, their petition, the election, all the support they got from the community. I strongly believe that their present organization should be seriously considered as a source for the new representation created by state law. Their board members are historically knowledgeable about water in the Ohio Valley, about water laws, water systems, water geology, conservation practices, community politics, and much else. So please seriously consider FLO as the organization to be designated for this new legislative seat. Um, and if you should decide, I believe it would be a great community and historical recognition of the grand effort Flo's principal founder made to get all this accomplishment, and that being Pat McPherson. Bless his soul. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, Regina, you're up yet next. Hello, my name is Regina Hirsch. I'm with Watershed Progressive. Um, we are the uh, consulting firm that uh, I believe Mayor Johnston spoke of that is doing the evaluation and analysis on stormwater recharge and water demand within the city limits, as well as the sphere of influence. And I just wanted to come here to give you three minutes of my time to wear the hat of the city and ask for the OBGMA to collaborate. Based on a, what the presentation that Jordan just put on, you can see that the projects within the city are really critical that we collaborate the city with the OBGMA. And from our study, we're intending to have a catalog of projects that are listed as well as cost benefit, feasibility, and get it grant ready for planning um, in this next few months. So we're asking that you guys collaborate. Um, I'd be happy to do a presentation on that at some board meeting. Um, and I just wanted to let you know it's out there. The some board meeting will probably be the very next one. Great. I'd be happy as long as it's not on my staff retreat when I'm going to be in the Smith River. Oh, <laughs> right. So I believe your next meeting I am available for. Yeah, the 30th. Yeah. I would be happy to. So, um, be on and, the 30th. and yes, one additional thing there is a um, large grant cycle coming out through the Wildlife Conservation Board, and based again on uh, Mr. Kier's data. I think that the OBGMA, the city, and other collaborators and partners would have a very high likelihood of success for planning and getting projects all the way through permitting and final engineering and be ready for implementation dollars next year. Right. What's the grant, uh, the match? None. Zero. You know, the IRWM is 50% now. I know. It's just, You're barking it's up the wrong tree. It really is. Yeah. And WCB has really little competition, and they're asking for uh, Ventura County as a core one watershed to put something in. Um, so I'm hoping to yeah. wrangle the horses, so to speak. Yeah. You're the grant wrangler. All right. Thank you. Regina, before you go tonight, would you take my card so that make sure that we can get in touch? Because I was talking to Russ about okay. grants and things. So. Thank All you. right, Bob, you're up next. I think he's on number nine. Or eight. Oh, eight. Okay, eight. Right. Okay, we'll we'll hold on to Bob for later. That's not easy. Um, it's not. He's slippery. <laughs> he's um, fast. <laughs> are there any other public who would like to address the board that didn't fill out a card? Anybody at all? No. Okay, we'll move on to the consent items. We have the uh, minutes of May 31st, 2018, and the Treasurer's Report for May 
2018 and June 2018. Right. Motion? Yes. Uh, move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Could you call the roll, please? Senator <laughs> Yeah. Russ Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that takes care of item seven. Item eight, um, general manager's goals and objectives. John? Yes, thank you. Um, I put this together because I thought it would be a good idea to start developing at least some kind of a work plan so that I can make sure that I'm on the same page with the board and you want me focused on what you want me focused on and, uh, and also as a document that I feel could certainly give the board ideas. Uh, I'm not expecting a decision tonight, but what I'd like to do is have you take a look at this, review it, and if you see something that either needs to be added or you want it taken off, um, you know, update it, and then what we can do is we can bring it back at another board meeting and we can finalize this, and that way it gives me some direction to, to move forward over the next 12 months or so. Okay, good. So you want comments back for the next meeting? Yeah, I'd like to bring it back, but I, I wanted at least, you know, I, I have a number of headings here for projects. Um, they're not going to all be done in a year, but certainly uh, we can start implementing or revising some of these programs that have been kind of held dormant for a while. And, uh, and there may be things that the board wants staff to consider and, and to make sure that we include in things you want us to focus on. Yeah, is this a laundry list, or is this in the order that which you you're, you would suggest we? Well, right now it's not set in an order. It's not, not prioritized. prioritized. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if you want to prioritize it, I'd I'd be open to that as well. Um, let's see. Do we still have our intern working for us? We do, so we don't have to send John. Out. To the extent that uh, she's available and has uh, uh, the capacity to assist, I, I think she'd be willing to do just about anything the board directs. Great. Yeah, and I think one of the areas where we may need some assistance is, is going back and looking at all the meters and collecting all that data and information. I know CC's gotten some of it in the database, but I don't think we have all of it. And then there's got to be a meter testing program implemented at some point. And, so there's, there's, that, there's some field work that's got to get done over the next few years. But I was thinking about it, John. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That looks good. We will, we will go over it. And uh, we'll, in, we'll invite the uh, public to go over it as well. See if we can get some comments from them. Okay. Uh, item 8B is an amendment to the MOU to participate in the Watersheds Coalition of Ventura County Integrated Regional Water Management Planning Efforts. This has been going on for 14 years. Um, and I was much younger when it started. We all were. Yeah. Um, it's a very worthwhile organization. Uh, you do have to be a member of this um, funding region and have your projects in the plan uh, if you're going to get any kind of state grant. So it's not something you want to um, not do. And we, we have always paid our fair share. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I included a staff report in this, uh, a lot of the language actually robbed from the county, but um, it, it was good background and I thought we should provide that background for you along with the MOU. Uh, the one component in the recommendation where it indicated the cost is about a thousand per year. That's incorrect. It's about fourteen hundred a year. Is that correct, CC? Fourteen hundred a year. So I wanted to make sure the board was aware of that. Um, Mr. Candy and I spoke, I think, last month. A little bit of a concern that the MOU didn't define how much the dollar amount was, and so that's why I brought that forward tonight to make sure you understood what you were committing to. The work plan uh, has been revised. Uh, a number of member agencies had concerns about how the money was being spent and where it wasn't quite. Uh, they were saying that they couldn't explain it to their auditor. So we, we've got a better, uh, a better handle on that um, document. So I think that's taken care of now. You, you need a motion on this? 
Yes. Okay, I would move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, Money, so I guess re roll call. <laughs> yes, we need a roll call for yes. everything. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Item 8C. Uh, Bob, do you want to address us before we get into this? Uh, yes, I do, because I have a couple questions. Great. And if you could answer those questions and get into it, then I could ask my question. Okay. I don't understand how this reads. On the second uh, page of 8C, under B, the currently seated OBGMA director may nominate a qualified candidate to be community facility director, resident director. And I thought that was interesting. Um, Which one are you on? Uh, I'm on 8C, second page, B. I guess that's the second paragraph, second page. It's really only a line and a half. Just for clarification, um, a lot of this language that was put into the background is directly out of the bill. Right. And so it wasn't something that we made up. No, that's what's, yeah, what, just, that's what's always been a problem, <laughs> is the people can't read in Sacramento. Yeah, I know. And they can't articulate what they mean. <laughs> Is, is then what I would ask, and then I'll sit down and I'll wait my turn because I want to ask a question when you've gotten done discussing this. Sure. Is that the only avenue? Because it appears there are no alternatives for people to file an application, get a consideration. Uh, do we go tug on the director's uh, shirt and say, nominate me? Anyhow, I, I just kind of like you to discuss that. So we fully understand how the process works, because it. Well, we'll I know you didn't do it, but, but it is vague. So, yeah. I, I'd like to then get back up once you've had your discussion about this and sure. discuss it. That's fine. Um, Russ, yeah. In answer to that question, the only avenue for uh, putting forth the potential director is through a nomination from one of the seated. Board members, but you know, it shouldn't say must. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're not required to. So one director can put forth one name, and then they would theoretically vote on a name. We didn't want to set it up so that everybody had to nominate a oh, person. Yeah. But you can politic the director in any way you want, really. Yeah, sure. In terms of. Oh, if it was only that, but Bob, if it was only tugging on the shirt. <laughs> so really, you know, how the directors come up with names is completely, you know, uh, not addressed in the statute and all avenues are open to the public to talk, speak with a director and see if they can get their person to be nominated by a director. Makes sense. That makes all the sense. That's what we should do in the city. For our committees, as a matter of fact. As long as we follow the rules, um, you know, there there are prohibitions about um, who could be nominated. Oh, uh, the the, the yeah, conflict of interest. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. We know who can't be. The need that's not sure. apply crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's what the process will be, and um, I, I guess we'll start it for the next meeting, right, John? Well, that that was my thought tonight. I wanted to give you some background on what you could do and what you couldn't do. Yeah. Um, I think that. You certainly could set up a more formal process than what, what's been covered here tonight if you so chose that. It, I don't think there's any requirement that says you can't do that. I mean, such as accepting applications or all that. But I think what Mr. Candy outlined is probably very appropriate where if people have an interest, they can meet the qualifications, then they should seek out one of the directors and let you know their interest. And, and it's, it's just incumbent upon the uh, director to make sure that the person being brought forward follows all the rules. Yeah, and if you want to have this presented at the next meeting, I ask that this needs to take place fairly quickly. Uh, the information needs to get CC so we can get it on the agenda appropriate time, and, and then you can have a board consideration for whatever candidates are brought forward next month. Okay. 
Um, any other comments from the audience on this process? Has everybody read the, the, legis the new legislation that was passed? Everybody familiar with it? Okay. Well, bring your names forward uh, and tug on somebody's shirt sleeve and uh, we'll get it going for next month. Is that okay? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and I believe I understand it. Is it the intent to actually place a director at the next uh, board meeting? I would hope so. That would be the that would be <coughs> the objective. Yes. That is the intent. Okay. So we've got about a month on this thing. Yeah. To look and see. Well, we have you have about probably two and a half weeks because we would appreciate as staff getting that information and, and, and sooner again, and that's getting why, the agenda That's together. why I'm here. I'm just here to get the ground no, rules. I just want to make sure we're clear because I don't want to have it expecting people to bring it that evening. I guess it could be considered that evening at the meeting if somebody wishes to be considered for nomination. It, it could be, but ideally it would be better yeah. if the name came forward early. Yeah. It doesn't have to happen at the next meeting. It can yeah. also happen at the following meeting if we yeah. feel like you know, we're not prepared to take action. On yes, that. yes. Okay. Okay, well, I just kind of like some communication because <laughs> we don't want to propose somebody late and it takes time to talk to people a lot of people don't volunteer a lot of people don't understand what they're volunteering for uh, especially you know, there's if only they're not at the meeting 10 people that know what the OBGMA actually is and does right. so um, if if it's the if it's the will of the board that says hey we'd really like to have this in by August 5th you know, or, or whatever, anything you can communicate would certainly be appreciated if, in fact, they're, you don't want to wait till the very minute somebody shows up and says, Mr. Mayor, hi, I'd like to represent the rate payers that are paying for the $60 million water bond because I don't see where there's anybody in here directly representing them. So if if i just don't I've, I've seen some of these things where the doors kind of swung closed before we understood it was ready to close and well, just we don't want to do sure that, that wasn't we do we have a, a a target date you're recommending that uh, um i think two weeks from if we can get you know we're we're flexible on the agenda we have to get the agenda published 72 hours before the meeting but it's nice to have a few days before that so let me take a look at a date real quick and at least we can give the public a general idea of what we're looking at for time. Um, and we don't have to do an FBI. And it doesn't have to check. be done at the next meeting, but it's just. And, and uh, uh, Chairman, uh, yes. did I understand you to say earlier that it is up to the director who is making the nomination to have vetted the candidate as to follow? Just to make sure that they ha follow all the rules in the in the new legislation. That they meet the, yeah. the standards. That yeah. they're they're not. Um, what is it, a city council member? They're not uh, a director or employee of the of okay. the uh, Ohio Water Conservation District or a, yeah. a no, director. I don't understand of, what they are. I just oh, yeah. was wondering about my, yeah, going along with what yeah. Bob was saying. I want to know what my responsibility is. Yeah, by the 17th. Yeah. 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 Right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, you think that's too short a time, Bob? No, hell no. no. It took us eight years to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're not getting younger, are we, Bob? Yeah. I also assume when I looked in the second portion of this, and that second portion is E. Excuse me. I know the people at home can't hear when you're not on the mic. That second portion is E. Uh, actually, no, it's D. The community facility director, <coughs> resident director, shall serve a term of three years. The community facility district resident director shall be removed from office for cause pursuant. Well, uh, I have an extreme amount of difficulty with that. Because cause, after you are seated, should be a violation of any one of those prior prohibitions. So if they move out, they should no longer be seated. If they no longer rent or own, they should be seated. If they do file a lawsuit, they should be unseated. And so that's a little vague, and I would hope that we could get a little bit of stronger language in there because for the city of Ojai, you can sit on the planning commission, 
and live in Thousand Oaks. I mean, it just we need to make sure that this is local for us. We work too hard, too long, and it's too important right now to have somebody that clearly doesn't understand every aspect of what our future water situation is. So, okay. so thank that's you. That's a question for the attorney. Is that uh, is that a violation at that point? And that would be. Yes, I think yeah. that that is a reasonable interpretation of this uh, of the statute. And uh, if someone were to you know become the resident director and then uh, for some reason or another not meet the qualifications, that they would need to be removed. They would mm -hmm. just have but then it wouldn't take a unanimous vote, because that's what it says. It's got to be a unanimous vote. Well, hopefully we could find unanimity within the, the, the directors on To the follow the law, yeah. Wouldn't come up. Okay. But, you know, what you're really doing, and, and this is good, is you're, you know, really picking apart this legislation. And one of the objectives was to get this passed in Sacramento. Sure. We'll have a short quorum. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bob. It looks like uh, the 17th is a Friday of August. Would be a good point to try and get whatever nominations the directors have received by that date. So that at least gives the, the public some time, at least who's ever at this meeting, to understand that's a target date we're looking for. The, the next board meeting is August 30th, so that it gives us a couple of weeks, but. Okay. Bill, go ahead. I have some questions. Uh, the mic, the yeah. Come with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Bill Miley. I want to ask a couple of quest clarifying questions about the requirements on the first page of 8C. I assume these come from the state law. One has a demonstrated interest in and commitment to the general policies and operating goals of the agency. We're talking about the community services district or the community or Casitas Municipal Water District or the Ojai Groundwater Agency. Where are you, Bill? I'm on 8C, the first requirement under Assembly Bill 1794. What, what's the definition of agency? The agency is the OBGMA. Okay. Um, is a customer of the Casitas Municipal Water District, what if they rent? And the water is paid by the landlord. Well, that's addressed in number three. Look at the next one. Owns that's or leases property. Okay. Own and, owns or leases real estate. So a renter can't do it. Okay. That's what I want to know. A renter can. A renter can. Owns or leases. How can a renter do it if they don't lease? If it's a month to month. Is that nitpicking? <laughs> okay. He's beating at your, you at your own okay. game, Bob. Look at that. That's a great okay. reading. <laughs> the, last one is, the last one is number eight. Does not have any interest in real property located within the agency's boundaries that is outside of the boundaries of the Casitas Municipal Water District Community Facilities District. So I live on North Signal Street, but a few years ago I owned the Miramonte uh, laundry and its property. So that would preclude me, right? Yep. Yeah. Now, what kind of logic is that? Well, the, the intent was, as I recall, that the nominees would come forth who were people that resided within the community facilities district. And it comes back to, to your point that the people that are paying for the services and through the bonds are going to have an opportunity to be to represent uh, the OBGMA. Okay. Does this come from state law? This is all state law. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's now state law. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> well, we. But the source of these qualifications came from the public. It meeting. came from here.
composed language, and then sent that to Sacramento, and they collect it. These are fun. You know what it says. You have to have a soul interest in what we're doing. If you have upside down church, you know what? We got another 5,000 people to choose. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have a, a target date to come back. Uh, I don't think we need to take any action on this. Do, do we have an application form already made up, or, or do we just go from this, we hand out the little sheet to the prospective candidate and say, do you meet these qualifications? I think, I think that would be probably the simplest thing, and then they, we need to give them a, a list of the directors they can contact if they, because you need to make the nomination. Mm -hmm. So they need to contact you. Is right, because it, it just seems like one of the things we might do, and it, it frequently is done, is to, you know, to have a, a short form that yeah. just lists these things. You know, have you ever had, have, do you know anyone who has, you know, whatever it is, and check the boxes. Uh, Are you, you now, any yeses, have then you then ever <laughs> been? Yeah. Well, we'll put together, uh, we'll put something together. And I was just thinking then they, and they could just simply check the boxes, sign it, yeah. and that's. Without, but you're going to need uh, name and address, too, to make sure they're within the right. facilities district, so. We'll, we'll put something you, together. You can check them out and be sure they didn't well, falsify uh, anything. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that they are getting primary home ownership exemption or residence exemption. And if the address where they live, yeah. that way they can get insured and that is actually the State Board of Legalization enforces that because they get that tax credit. Yeah. Um, one thought. Would you like the public to submit to the OBGMA office, and then we can get those applications to the board for review? Th or do you nobody's want? going to tug on my shirt. Okay. Well, no, they can do that. <laughs> okay. They can still get a hold of you. <laughs> so whatever your choice is, or would you rather have them I, just come directly to you? Whatever, John, you no, figure I'm happy it out. With okay. them coming to the office. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll make sure that the board gets those applications. Sure. Yeah, it's on the website. It's obgma at aol.com. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, the nominations are due by August 17th. Okay. Everybody clear? Okay, and we'll have that, uh, the apps will be available or whatever kind of a form we're going to use uh, Sooner rather by than next later. week? Yeah. Yes, on, on the website. Okay, on the website. Okay, great. Okay, uh, item 8D, approve water well permit uh, number 0038 for 4424 Thatcher, and it was spelled right here, thank you, Road, LLC. Uh, we reviewed this um, at our last meeting, did we not? No, it was, it was held off, and I think, uh, well, last meeting we didn't have a quorum, in the previous meeting, I'm not sure why. It just didn't come forward at the time. Jordan, you've got any problems with this? The, I took a look at this application as well as <clears throat> uh, some of the ancillary supporting information that was transmitted to me uh, by CC. Uh, the intent of this, as I understand it, the intent of this application is to install a relatively low production capacity water well uh, and extract groundwater exclusively from underlying bedrock uh, be below the alluvium. Even though this property is located within the alluvial footprint at the surface uh, of, the, of the basin, the intent is only to extract groundwater from the underlying sespe formation. And in fact, that, that makes sense with respect to several other wells that are fairly low producers that extract only from the alluvium uh, within that part of the basin. Uh, the <clears throat> so the discussion was to approve this, uh, this application with conditions, and those conditions being that one, the OBGMA is allowed, is notified, duly notified, and allowed to review the cuttings from the drilling rig operation. Two, allowed to review the e log conducted uh, in the borehole uh, and receive a copy of that, of course. Uh, three, uh, to ensure that the uh, design, final design of the well, based on the geophysical log, includes a seal that completely isolates the alluvial portion of the basin. Thank you. Uh, and, and D, we're able to witness 
that seal during its during its construction. The idea being that with the moratorium and pending uh, the uh, rescindance of that moratorium with respect to groundwater sustainability planning uh, and or alternative demonstration uh, exhibit uh, approval uh, from the DWR, uh, this is the way that we could then allow the director of the Watershed Protection District to uh, grant an exemption to the moratorium for this particular applicant. Okay. Sir, you want to step up to the <coughs> podium? Good evening. I'm Jonathan Katz, um, and I have a property and a well in, in this area. Is there a criteria for low production that you cited? Two acre uh, feet per year. I believe the application uh, puts a two acre foot request for these parcels in sum. It's in C. Times two. So Maximum for the two APNs. Four acre feet total. Two acre feet per, per parcel, a uh, total of four acre feet okay. per year. So, it, but there's no standard reference or criteria when you say a low production well. That can mean uh, different things depending on the well? Yes, it could. And from the standpoint of uh, obtaining a building permit, for example, uh, the minimum requirement would be a five gallon per minute test for 24 hours with complete recovery. That's a out of the county water well ordinance. Uh, the, uh, the state, um, under Sigma, there's the de minimis use uh, of its two acre, two acre, acre feet, feet from, a, from a given well. So this would exceed the de minimis uh, extraction capacity, uh, and um, it would need to also exceed the five gallon per minute uh, production testing. Okay. To, uh, to that's the lower minimum. That's the lower minimum. The minimis is two acre feet. Now, there, there are people for whom 1,000 gallons a minute is a low producing well. But um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, is it going to have a meter? It will have to have a meter. Thank you. All right. Then, it's a pleasure of the board. Well my, well, my question is, and I think you addressed it on well, I'm not sure I understood it, but the, the, the impact or the effect of the county watershed uh, moratorium is that they grant exceptions under de minimis use. Is that? No, it's not. So it's my understanding that when an applicant wishes to drill a new water supply well that does not meet any of the other s statutory exemptions to the water well moratorium, water well permit moratorium uh, in Ventura County in the basins which have moratoria, at OB, OI Basin being one, <clears throat> that the, uh, the applicant may apply for an exemption to the moratorium directly to the director of the public of watershed protection district public works and that's basically mr jeff pratt now pratt then puts it on the groundwater sustainability agencies for the individual basins to say do you have a problem with this or will you would you grant this this application uh, an exemption the obgma has a permitting process in place so by the application before the board and the, the conditions, which I've described and I think we've discussed as well, CC, uh, those, uh, those would allow, by approval of that permit with those conditions, the agency to say to the director of public works, yes, you may grant your waiver of the exceptions to the moratorium. And then the watershed protection district can issue their permit to the driller so that the well can be constructed. It's kind of complex, but it's all the uh, all the. Okay, I'll, I'll give you my my reaction, <laughs> out of ignorance, I guess, or not following all that is, is that by us doing this before those the the county who has a moratorium on, we're sort of endorsing this as okay. Is that? More or less. Yeah, you're. Okay, you're, well, and you're if we don't think it, it, yeah. approving it with conditions. It's an right, approval. approving it with conditions, but recommending they grant an exemption, isn't it? Correct. But remember, it's in the bedrock. It's not in the alluvium. It, it, but, it's not going to affect our, our water. It, it's direct effect on the alluvial portion of the basin, which is the alluvial aquifer that, that comprises the basin per which GWR. Is us, right? That's us, yeah. Uh, 
then we have the capacity to. Okay, and the reason for this particular well is what? Are they abandoning something else and need a new one, or is this a, a, a to develop yeah. yet? It's, it's effectively another? a virgin property, as I understand it, with respect to water that has no connection otherwise uh, that is not subject to another moratorium. Okay. And I understood more than I thought. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, pleasure of the board for this uh, permit. Somebody has to move one way or the other. One way or the other. I move it be denied then and uh, under present conditions. I'm not sure why if this is a, a brand new thing and to be consistent with the, you know, we're having a council meeting on the 7th and we're trying to, you know, communicate to the public the seriousness of the water situation. I realize this is just, you know, a drop, but then why have the moratorium if all new requests are still approved? I'm, I, I, I can understand that if it went to watershed protection and they thought it was a good idea because they're the ones that have the moratorium on it. But for us to sort of preempt that decision by saying, we think it's a great idea, go ahead with it, I, I guess I'm not inclined to do that. I don't well, know if I have there, a second to that motion. But There is another wrinkle to this whole process, and that's this document right here. Um, when we turn this in, and if we approve this tonight and we turn it in, um, Mr. Bennett's supposed to rescind the, the uh, moratorium. Remember that? Interesting. Well, and that, that, that would then... Then that would be the sequence then of doing it. If we do what we're supposed to do and then the, and then the county does what they're supposed to do, then I guess my comments would be moot. But as long as there's a moratorium in place, I don't see us recommending unless it's some kind of a emergency and somebody who had water and isn't going to have water but this sounds like basically new development even though minor it, it is new development he has to have a water source or he can't build right. so the uh the seal how deep is the alluvium at that point jordan it, any rough estimate it would be determined during drilling and every borehole is exploration uh, but it's it's somewhere in the 200 to 300 foot depth range. So basically the, there's no water which would flow from the alluvium into that casing right. until below the bedrock. Okay. It's going to have to be cemented? That, that's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Or more? Yep. The situation with uh, that property is, you know, I, I know because Senior Canyon's involved, um, in that area, you know, the East End, uh, people get service both from Casitas and from Senior Canyon. And there is no, uh, those two lots, there is no service to those lots. Senior Canyon, um, in sort of uh, cooperation with Casitas, established a policy 10 years ago of not issuing any new meters because of conservation, conservation reasons. So we've turned down people uh, over those 10 years because that was the policy. These people, uh, you know, Andrew Stassi's engineer has approached us and basically we looked at it as a board and said we can't do this uh, because we've turned down a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. I, I heard, I think it's correct, but uh, it's second hand, that Casitas would give service to these people, but it involves a very complicated easement process to grant access so they could get water to the lot because the lots are I don't know, three, four hundred, five, five hundred feet from Thatcher Road. So um, they're in a pickle. Uh, they have two vacant lots. They want to, they need water, obviously. So uh, I'm inclined to um, uh, support this. Uh, it seems like it's um, kind of a compromise situation. I, I think, I think with a rule or a, you know the the no the moratorium. Um, there have to be some kind of exceptions that, that uh, stand the test of common sense. And uh, so I'm inclined to... So what is, what is the common sense the common as, as far as fair play? You, know, you just said for 10 years yeah, you've been is, saying no. It is a... The flow is very minimal. That's a compromise. That you, the water is not coming from the, allu the alluvial layer. That's another compromise. Those are conditions that have that water being 
being taken out that below, the, below the bedrock. Okay, but that hasn't changed. That if you, your original statement, if I understood it was, is that it has been denied because other people have been denied. Are you saying other people have been denied for different reasons and this is an extraordinary case where nobody else is in the same category? Is that what I'm hearing? It just seems to me that if we can go ahead and approve our plan and that if the county then uh, lifts the moratorium, then not only this property, but other properties in similar circumstances would all, you know, would be in order for them to apply. We have a motion on the floor, but has not gotten a second. Bruce, do you want to talk? I just make a comment. It seemed like the purpose of the moratorium was to stop people running to the pump house to drill new wells until the groundwater sustainability plans were developed. And there are a lot of, that's going to be four or five years before those plans are probably approved. In the meantime, uh, this, this person would be able to get uh, a well, even though there's a minimal effect and you guys have your plan. So if you're waiting for the county to list it, it might not happen for five years. That, that's possible. I don't know, we don't know whether or not this plan is going to supplant um, the groundwater sustainability plan at DWR. Uh, but nevertheless, the moratorium language was when this is submitted, when we submit a plan, the moratorium is over. Well, I would suggest we adopt our plan, uh, and if it's an extra month or two to find out whether or not the county is going to, you know, cooperate, and if not, and this is an extraordinary kind of situation, then we could take another look at it would be my suggestion but yes if I may one of the exemptions to the countywide moratorium in areas that would be in or out of groundwater sustainability agency uh, jurisdictions is that if a purveyor does not issue a will serve letter or issues a will not serve letter that is a reason that they could exempt that applicant from the moratorium as well mm -hmm. so that's another another small loophole that would still require OBGMA approval, but because that appears to be the case, owing to uh, effectively a can't serve and effectively a infeasible to serve, um, it, then that would be another loophole that would support the OBGMA in, in approving this application with the conditions that we have the capacity well, to. Do uh, you have another, another term you could use besides loophole? <laughs> Uh, maybe an opportunity or, you know, a, a, a reasonable exception. Sorry, sometimes, <laughs> I live in the, yeah, sometimes I live in the 80s. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the idea is that there are exemptions available to support the progress and progressive development of otherwise undevelopable opportunities. Well, there's no second to my motion, so I'll quit debating it until there's another demotion of some sort, if okay. there's going to be one. We have the opportunity for another motion. Okay, I move that we uh, what, accept or what, what's the word to um, approve, approve the, um, the well the, permit this well, and I will second. So uh, it will it will pass. <laughs> so we I guess we don't need any further <laughs> debate. But uh, when you know, I guess we're going to call the roll. Uh, yes, please. We need to call the roll. I can't vote for it in, in this sequence. No. Yes. Yes. All right, we'll move on to well, eight. Be, let's get some clarity, though. I believe the motion fails because you have to have at least three board members to approve this. Oh, it's a, it's a quorum. It's a it's quorum. Just, okay, but a, two is considered a quorum and a vote? You I only, think you got to have, you have a quorum majority of a quorum. Of a quorum. Okay. Majority. majority of the quorum. Okay, I want to make sure we're clear on that because I've been in other meetings where they had to have three votes to pass. That's when the f when you have everybody present. Usually it's on an ordinance type of thing too. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I, it's, a, it's a, ma a majority of the quorum. Unless it's specified in the law that you yes, have to have you got a, a super majority or something. Or a, okay. Okay. I'm happy I got to say, <laughs> say what I thought. Okay, item 8E, Ojai Day. I think this should be fairly simple. We do want to go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll be more positive. Okay, <laughs> I move we approve it. Thank you. And second. Uh, roll call, please. Greg Johnson. Yes. Bruce Johnson. Yes. Jeff Johnson. Yes. Jeff Johnson. Yes. Jeff Johnson. Yes. Jeff Johnson. Yes
Director Johnson. Yes. Director Yes. Director Phil. Yes. Okay. Um, I noticed that we have the groundwater management plan in two areas, uh, one in the informational items and one um, in the action items. Is yeah, we in the. Yeah, and the. <laughs> And they scrambled to get the agenda revised. We forgot to take it off of information. Okay, so. so we'll cross off that one. Yes. All right. Uh, Jordan, I think you're up, aren't you? Thank you. Um, before the board tonight for uh, review, review and approval is the uh, Groundwater Management Plan 2018 update for the Ojai Valley Groundwater Basin. Uh, this is a document that is a living document. Uh, it's something that uh, it stems from the original uh, early 90s groundwater management plan, the 2007 update. And the intent really of, of this is multifaceted. Uh, namely, it gives us an opportunity to continue to manage this basin in such a way that is, maintains local control and is less expensive than the groundwater sustainability planning uh, approach. Uh, it also is importantly, does not have all the answers. What it has is a pathway to ask the questions that will help us get some of the answers over time. Uh, and it gives, it's a planning document that allows us to uh, present to prospective granting entities such that we can then fund projects in partnership with the city, uh, with Casitas, with private parties uh, to implement and further advance the objectives and goals for managing this basin. Uh, so you've had a chance to take a look at this. We've had public comments uh, on a few drafts of this, and uh, we've addressed many of those in this, uh, uh, in this current July 26th, 2018 document. Okay. And I have gone over this thing so many times. I'm glad we're finally at the end. Do you have any public comment then before we Anybody want to um, comment on the, on the plan before we take any action? Okay. Seeing none. No, I'll give you a motion and then we can talk just briefly on it. Sure. Okay, yeah. I, I would yeah. move we approve yeah. it. I uh, don't feel comfortable voting on this. Without a full board? Because I just don't know it thoroughly enough. Well, and uh, that know, kills I'm, that I'm an alternate thing. and basically not paying as close attention to OBGMA as I do to some few other things. So I'm very, I'd am i be very uncomfortable to vote on this from, from my, I can't really do that um, because I don't know it well enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll have to put this off till next month. <laughs> Unless a two to one vote would carry it. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be <laughs> no. two to one. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I think we better try to get it. Yes. Uh, yes, the bugaboo of consistency, yes. <laughs> if I may ask a, a brief question, um, the, um, and the city is looking at, at uh, grant applications. Uh, the OBGMA certainly is. I think next month, uh, Director Baggerly uh, requested, uh, yes, you, uh, to, uh, come back and talk more about grant opportunities and maybe uh, if I can request are there certain dates or thresholds that we should be taking a look at uh, that would potentially pass before this could be approved at the August meeting we can always call a special meeting if we have to um, Regina do we have any pressing dates And that would, you'd have to have the application complete by that date? Yes, so. Mm. That's uh, a challenge. Yeah. Well, and I need okay. to, I should have checked before the meeting tonight. Uh, <laughs> we need to file this with the Department of Water Resources and I haven't seen a deadline, but I'm not sure there could be. For okay. what? For yeah. the groundwater management, the annual report. We've got to file the, essentially this is really kind of an annual report. But yeah. separately have the annual report well, that's currently, that's and true. that's been approved. That's true. This is a, a separate document, although there, there is uh, a worthwhile discussion to have about unifying the belt with respect to 
annual reports, reports, groundwater management plans, and sustainability plans. There, there isn't a date for an annual report for the groundwater management plan. There's only one for the annual report for whatever it is, April. Well, you know, I appreciate what Peter's saying on it, you know, to be the sub or the what the <laughs> the alternate and to have to jump into something this complex uh, I have seen it and I will have to confess publicly that a lot smarter people uh, have put this together and it's going to be reviewed at the state level by a lot smarter people than or person than I am uh, so my feeling was is that after all the time and effort that's gone into it it should be moved to the next level and if we can do that tonight I would like to see it done if uh, if that's not going to be considered a resounding endorsement uh, with a uh, two votes, think, assuming that you would support it. Then. The way I look at it, at it is if, if Peter is not willing to participate in this, then the board doesn't have a quorum on this issue. Even though, you know, there's a quorum for the meeting, you're able to take action. But it's, it's not that he's voting no on it, it's that he's not participating. He's recusing himself. In yeah, the, in exactly. The and, and so it seems to me like there's not a quorum to be able to take action on this matter. Could he recuse and, or not recuse himself and abstain? Say that again? I said, could Peter recuse, not recuse himself but abstain on the vote? Which is, he's not saying no, he's not saying yes, but if it's two out of three is, is still a majority, unless that's, you know, not, not going to be helpful at the next level. It just may not be helpful at uh, DWR yeah. without um, full so, support of the board. Okay, so we need, we'll have four people uh, at, at the next meeting. Yeah. And, uh, and if we can get around to, uh, you know, a, a fifth member quickly. So uh, it, just for, clarification this this is not this document is not required by the sustainable groundwater management act we're no. not preparing this in compliance with sigma uh, this document is done to comply with obgma's enabling legislation and through this planning process though we were able to make the alternative demonstration right. to dwr so i think dwr will be interested in this document because as they're reviewing our, our alternative demonstration, they're gonna to wanna to know that we have a planning process that, that is uh, viable and effective. That right. I understood this is the justification for being able to go the alternate route, that we had our own plan, we, were, we had never been in overdraft or you know, That's all right. the, That's right, right. so you're exactly right, yeah. So it just seems like it's procedurally, we can move it more quickly, but I, this is government, so. I guess we'll. <laughs> well, um, we could always take a second vote on it um, in August. We could approve it tonight with two votes. Well, if we do it at a, at a special meeting, uh, do we have a deadline we're trying to meet? Is that the 18th? Uh, what, Regina, you want, or you're sorry. Go ahead. go ahead, Regina. I just want to note that if we want to use any materials, which, which is in the plan that hasn't been in any other plans prior for any grant app, Would you speak in the Yeah, I think you better come up to the podium, please. I think if, if we're going to do any applications, grant applications, we could certainly put the information in there but not submit until the board does approve the groundwater management plan. We would need to have it approved by the board for the if it's new information um, that we're using to substantiate the claims of the project. So um, we would need that approved by the board to go forward with the grant. And by what date, assuming that... Well, up, assuming I'm assuming gets, that there's going to be no qualms with a lot of the data that I'm thinking of. Um, and if so, we can put the grant ask together, but then if it's not approved, we'll have to we'll have to change our horses midstream, so to speak, right before the end. So um, I have a high confidence in the data that I want to use, but um, since the board hasn't approved it, I could... I could uh, What's, straw what, what is the last date at which we would have to approve it in order for you to be able to benefit? I, ideally, from the August thirtieth. August thirtieth. Yeah, oh, I, okay. I want to have a Labor Day weekend. <laughs> okay. Well, <that's> <laughs> well I, I believe that most of the information is available in the alternative demonstration, which has been approved. Uh, you know, the only real new stuff in this document that the board hasn't approved, and Jordan, you know, jump in here, 
is the the analysis that Jordan led us through today, and that's the uh, with regard to the perched aquifer versus the deeper aquifer and interaction and the impact that that has on surface flow in San Antonio Creek. Well summarized. So as long as that's not what you're interested in. No, there's more. At some point, they will be interested in that. The that water. is part of what I think we need to use. So. Okay. It's the storage and action table, too. Yeah. Okay. So we can go like it's going to be approved, and if it's not, we can, you know, okay. adaptability. But uh, I, I do suggest that you try to get it approved prior to the grant application. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, your grant application, is that what we're talking about? Well, we're, we're cooperating with this, and we don't know right. exactly whose application will be a, a kind of a consortium before it's over, but okay. we're still there. Well, that's unfortunate. I so, think the chair has ruled. <laughs> it's unfortunate, okay. We'll do it next month. Okay. Well, okay. it sounds like we can still, what, when is the next meeting? August 30th. Oh, that's the same date that uh, Virginia did, yeah. Can well, if we decide we have to have a special meeting, we'll do it. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, item, the informational items, both of them are, um, we don't need to do them. There's no update on AB 1797 because it's been a, approved and signed by the, the governor. We, we had it on last month's agenda. It's really redundant with the community facilities director appointment process. So I think we've detailed it in that staff report, mm -hmm. what got approved. Okay. Um, it is now 619 and we're going to adjourn this meeting. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>